Okay, in this video, I've been asked to show what is the easiest way that I know to create a riser. So the easiest way that I know to do that is basically to resample a pad and use it in the sampler. So I'll show how I would go about that. So I'll add in a MIDI track, remove that because I don't need it. I don't need that either. And I'll just bring in a VST that makes a nice pad sound. So we'll use the Roland SRX strings. We'll leave it on the default patch. That's fine. And then we're going to create a MIDI clip that lasts four bars. So right click, choose empty MIDI clip. And then for the note itself that we're gonna use uh, to make the riser, we want that to be in the same key as your song. So if your song is in the key of D, for example, then you want to use a long D note for the riser. This is so that when it pitches up, it will end in the right key uh, to match your song. Pretty simple, right? So if I uh, create a long note here and we'll push the velocity up to maximum and then if I exit out of the MIDI clip, we can just turn this gain up a little bit just for the purposes of this demo. And then if I press the space bar, we'll audition the strings. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is on our audio channel, we'll also delete all of this stuff because we don't need it. We'll arm the track. We will select this drop down menu and change extension into resampling, which simply means that Ableton's gonna record the audio stream that's playing. Um, which in this case will be our pads from the MIDI channel. And then we will simply press record and it will record the audio from that MIDI track into the audio track. Okay, now that that's recorded, we can delete this channel so we don't need it anymore. And if we look in here, we can see the audio recording. And then we'll turn warp off because we don't need it to warp. And we shall turn the gain up so that we can see that we have this recording. And what I like to do here is I like to right click on the clip and then just choose the consolidate option. So it will basically bounce it to a file. And then what we'll do is we will add a MIDI track. I'll get rid of these because they're not necessary. And what we will do is we will go to instruments and we will use the sampler. So we'll just drag an empty sampler down to here onto our MIDI channel. And then we'll simply just grab this WAV recording of the pads onto the sampler. So now if I create a brand new clip in MIDI for the sampler and I play a long note at C3, in theory at least, this should play the pad. So now what we want to do is we want to enable the notes to be able to pitch this sample up. So if you click on the MIDI tab here on the sampler and you'll see this range thing. So at the moment by default, the Ableton sampler has a range of five semitones, which means in either direction, you can make um, a note pitch up or down by five semitones. However, push that to the limit, you can make it go up or down 24 semitones also known as two octaves, which is quite handy for making a riser. So if I go back to the sampler, um, if I wanted to make a long riser, I might have to make this sample loop. But for the purposes of this basic video, we're just gonna show how to make this pitch up. So if I go back to the MIDI clip, double click on it, and we can see that we still have our, our C3 note. What we do is we go down to this envelopes tab and uh, by default 
MIDI control is selected and pitch bend is selected, which is actually the control that we want to use. And all we have to do is just draw in the line that we want. So if I put a dot to start at zero, and then if I have another one to end at the end of four bars, this is gonna fail by the way, but it will pitch up by two octaves and should in theory reach the end of two octaves by the end of the fourth bar. However, because when you pitch a sample up, it actually plays the sample faster, what will happen is you'll reach the end of the sample before four bars has elapsed. So that's when you have to make the sample loop. So to prove this, we'll press play and you'll see that the sample will end before we hit four bars. So if I go back to the sampler, I can basically tell it to loop backwards and forwards and just move in this marker to somewhere on the end and it should go back on itself once it hits the end and will allow us to complete the four bars of the riser. Here we go. And that essentially is how to make a riser.